Welcome to the Floor Academy podcast. I'm your host, Kyle Hedin, former installation contractor, still licensed in the state of Arizona. And we are here this week with Shauna Bouchard of Johns Manville. She is a senior marketing director for their Go Board division. And we're going to be talking about engagement pods. And this conversation really came around when I, I started seeing a lot of posts on Facebook and everyone was like, hey, go click on the three buttons of my my business page and send it out to all of your friends and, and invite everyone you know on your friends list to come and like my page. And I was like, that is the worst idea I have ever seen. Don't do that. And, and I made a post about it. Um, and some people get it. Some people don't. But we're going to we're going to dive into why that's a bad idea and what these engage, engagement pods are within the social media realm, how they affect the algorithm and, and work in your favor and work against you. And uh, we will see where this conversation goes. So we'll have Shauna introduce herself in just a minute. It's not her first time on the show. A lot of you probably know her, but we will uh, we'll get that introduction here in just a second. If you're new, why are you listening to Floor Academy? You're here because we are your business solution to give you a lifestyle lift, lift within the flooring, tile, and stone industries. Uh, well, there's tons of technical advice out there, there's not a lot of business advice, and we've got it every Wednesday, brand new episode coming out just for you so that you can learn how to manage better, delegate tasks, build systems and processes, hire efficiently, understand your insurance, become profitable and actually understand your numbers. All that stuff that's supposed to happen at the desk and you get so caught up in the day to day doing the actual work and never happens. We're dealing with all of it to help make your life easier and more rewarding. Uh, go check out flooracademypod.com and we got files over there to help you figure out what you need to charge. We've got our mastermind group so that if you want to take your business to the next level, we're putting you in groups of five business owners at a time. They're all vetted personally by me. Everyone is dedicated and raring to go to actually be growth oriented and achieve the goals that they're setting. And so we meet every other week and move your businesses forward. You can help support the show at Patreon, uh, patreon.com forward slash Floor Academy. Even five bucks a month goes a long way. Make sure you like, make sure you subscribe. In fact, you're listening right now. Do me a favor. Take the phone out of your pocket. Go open it up and then go click on the, the review button and leave me a review. And if you're not subscribed, click that subscribe button too, okay? You're my marketing department. I need you all to help me out. I appreciate it. And we got a quick word from our sponsor, Krona Software. If you're looking for an easy and affordable way to manage your business, Cronus Flooring Software is your solution. Streamline your workflow for managing leads, inventory, and scheduling installations. It includes every feature needed to support your business at a very affordable price. It's extremely user-friendly and easy to navigate. It fully integrates with QuickBooks Online, which makes tracking your profitability as easy as clicking a button. Visit chronosoft.com today to schedule a demo. That's K-R-O-N-U-S-S-O-F-T.com. And this was built by a flooring retailer for flooring retailers because the solutions that were readily available on the market just weren't cut in the mustard. And so they designed it themselves and they are now putting it out to the market and saying, hey, come check us out. Look at what we got. And if they're going to give you help, they're a small business just like you and I. And so the, the owner is willing to sit there and have a conversation like just like if you want to reach out to me and discuss business and instead of just listening, I'm here, man. I'm going to take the phone call. We're going to have a good time. We're going to we're going to talk about you. He's going to do the same thing. He wants to help you grow so that you are, are successful and his product can be successful as well. We're all in it together. So go ahead and check them out. You get to speak with Chesney. She will do your demo and she is great at what she's doing. That's enough out of me for sure. So Shauna, welcome back. Who are you? What do you do? And why do you do it? So I'm a senior marketing specialist. I'm not a director, oh. Oh, although Although I have been called a director before and I've been called a manager and I've been called a guru and I've been called a ninja and I've recently I was called the go board maven. Um, I think I've 
I that one that I thought was I go well that's a new one I haven't heard that like I've heard you know the, I've heard people called mavens before but I had to look it up in the dictionary to like. Like, what does that mean? Whoa, and, now, hold and on. You know I got I to I I interrupt. I'm sorry. Did you go online <laughs> and use your phone or did you actually grab a dictionary? Oh, I went on my phone. Okay. Like, that's, you know, that's, it, it was right in my hand at the time. So. <laughs> all right. I'm sorry. Uh, no, it's all, that's all good, Kyle. Uh, and so, so I'm, yeah. So basically I'm a marketer um, and I'd say I'm a growth marketer for uh, John's Manville Go Board. Um, I I do it because hey, I got to earn a living too. Uh, but I'm I'm very fortunate to market a product that is I think is incredible. Um, we're all very passionate about it. So um, why I do it, uh, you know, I vast like. There's times though where I'm like, why do I do this? I think right? We all do that because you're you know you're you get busy, you get you know, swamped with work and, and growing a business requires a lot of work, full throttle. So, um, there, you know, a lot of sleepless nights, a lot of, uh, pulling in, uh, pulling some more work on the weekend or, mm. um, so what, so the, at, at, there are times where I'm like, why do I do this? And you know what? I do it because I enjoy, I enjoy my team. I enjoy the product. I enjoy working for John's Manville, and I enjoy the end user. Um, I enjoy interacting with people that you know. I mean, and it's always nice when they'll buy your product after that. So um, that's that's why I do it, you know. Okay. And I need to earn a living. <laughs> hey, I look. I love it. I love your team over there. You got a bunch of great people. You got a great product. Yeah. And, uh, you know, occasionally people are nice and you can get like really cute rubber duckies. Yeah. Occasionally and, people are nice. Yeah. And, and, and then you make your, you make your kids happy. And so there's like yeah. rubber ducks yeah. all over my house. Yeah. Uh, okay. So engagement pots, that's, that's the reason for today. And mm -hmm. I, why don't you tell me what, it, what is an engagement pot? Like, give me this basic definition. What are we working the with here? Why are we even going to talk about it? Okay, so a, an engagement pod um, typically happens on, the, well, they call it an engagement pod uh, because it relates to social media. Um, I think the function also happens probably in er other areas of life too, um, but specifically to social media. Um, it's a group of like-minded individuals um, who have things they want to promote um, and they're using social media to promote it because, you know, social media is a fairly inexpensive avenue for uh, promoting your brand, your product, yourself. Um, and so what what a pod does is they, they have an agreement to engage with each other's content for the purpose of spreading the awareness. Mm -hmm. So... Um, likes, comments, you know, shares, uh, but they've agreed to do this for each other. So, you know, engagement pods could be any number of size. They could start with a couple people, uh, you know, grow to five people, 10 people, 100 people. Um, and they all, they all interact with each other's content. So that's okay. that's the basic idea of it, um, and and what it does is it, it, they're priming the pump for more followers, mm -hmm. um, more more engagement. It, it 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 literally does this, right? And it spreads. It just so expands that's outwards. The, yeah, that's the purpose. Okay. Well, and that sounds great, right? That's what I want. I want people to interact with my content online because the algorithm says, if people are interacting with it, then this must be good. I should show it to more people. Correct. Theoretically, right? This is this is this yeah. is what's happening with the algorithm. Yeah. But that's well, not what can happen with an engagement pod. Correct. So so what happened when uh, Instagram went from a chronological order and it, Facebook also to mm -hmm. a certain degree? Remember, I don't know. It, it, oh, it was all chronological. You remember? Okay. Mm -hmm. There's some people that don't remember that. And uh, and so then your, your content was harder to find because 
the content that was getting engagement was rising to the top. And, and typically, once you start getting that attention, you know, and all this engagement and there's people around you, that's opportunity too. So your, your opportunities became bigger, but then there's, you know, folks that aren't being seen anymore. So in, in chronological, you, you have a better chance of being seen regardless of whether people are engaging with your, your, your content or not. And so um, when the platforms change the way they do things, um, you have to also change the way you do things. So engagement pods, uh, I believe, started because of that. So, and of course, the platforms are teaching people how to, you know, how to use it. And mm -hmm. um, I don't know that I'm not like a, I'm not really an expert on the all the fine details of, of how the algorithms work. Um, I have a general understanding of how they work mm -hmm. uh, based because uh, I have a programming background. So I, I, I get algorithms. I've written algorithms. So um, what the platforms are teaching people um, is typically you got to post five to 10 times a day. Uh, the frequency has to be there. Um, and the more you post, the more people will find you. Uh, and I, that to me is also a pitfall. Okay. okay. Um, and I don't think it's sustainable for, you know, unless you have an entire, you know, entourage or a, a you know, a company that's producing content with you or for you. Mm -hmm. Um, and so the, the engagement pods, uh, what happens is the people that you say you're friends with may not have similar interests or similar products or similar, you come from different, different things. Right. Um, and so when you're engaging, it, it comes off as in, inauthentic. If, if sure, you're going to get, yeah. you're going to rise up in the feed, you're going to float to the top, but is it going to look authentic to the users you're trying to attract? Um, and I think that's, uh, that's the pitfall. It, it comes off as inauthentic. Um, and then once it's inauthentic, you know, it, people aren't going to engage. Uh, so that that's in a nutshell, I think, uh, what can happen with engagement pods. Yeah, I, that's my understanding as well, right? So I look at everything as I want to market my business to the niche that I want to work within. And so I have who my ideal client is. And I know, you know, I need to define that. You need to define that for your business, but there's going to be some demographic and it's going to be very specific. How old is the, how old is the typical couple or client of yours? Are they married, unmarried? Do they have, you know, do they own dogs, not dogs, cats? Do they, are they reptile people? Are they, do they have children? What age are their children? Are they in sports? Uh, what kind of cars do they drive? What kind of education background do they have? What kind of income bracket are they in? All of these things start forming who this ideal client is. Actually, I have a good discussion on that with Paul Lucia. Um, go find that episode, Identifying Your Target Market, right? And, and, and we go through that. But you, you go through all this work. You need to figure out who that is. Those are the people you want interacting with your content online. And then I see everybody like, hey, like my page. I don't want you to like my page. I really don't. I'm sorry. Like I, I, I want you to go like floor Academy. If you want to interact with floor Academy and all of my friends that ever went and liked the illustrious hard book or heart, illustrious hard books, illustrious hardwoods page <laughs> for the flooring company. I appreciate it. Right. But I never asked any of my fellow flooring people to go do that. They did that on their own because they wanted to see the content, which means it's valuable to them. But if I think what we want to do is everyone's like, I need more followers. I need more followers. And yes, you're right. You do need more followers because more followers means you get put in front of more people unless no one interacts with your content. And so when you're asking everyone on your friends list to go and like to send it out to all of their friends to like that business page, you're getting a bunch of people that are not in your demo, like your 
ideal demographic. They're probably not even in your geographical location. And now you have all these people following your page that are going to ignore your post if it goes in front of them. And then Facebook or Instagram or anybody starts looking at it as this content sucks. We're not going to show it to anybody. And so you might make a really great post that would have previously done really, really well with your audience, but you've now built in a horrible audience that doesn't care. And so I think like if you can find the right engagement pod, which is dealing with your target demographic, you're going to be really successful. But when you just try and throw people at something, it doesn't work. It's the same thing as why buying followers on Instagram doesn't work. I don't need a phone farm from Southeast Asia in some giant warehouse putting likes and comments on my stuff. It's not going to help me because they can track all of it. So what if, what do you see, Shauna, as like a better way to go about getting our content in front of people instead of trying to build a giant engagement pod that probably isn't like instead of a generic one, right? Like how do we hone in on building a quality engagement pod? Yeah, that's a good, that's a good question. Um, And you know what? I, I've not, I've never utilized an engagement pod like I've never created one to for the purpose of, you know, I've never I've always found engagement pods. Mm-hmm. Um, and I wouldn't say that they're engagement pods that are uh, were intentionally formed. So uh, Facebook groups is a very good example of what you would say is an engagement pod because people are it's a pod, right? It's a group. Um, and people are interacting with each other very authentically. Um, and so for my purposes, finding those types of pods or groups mm-hmm. um, has been effective. Um, I didn't create it. I didn't, uh, I don't manage it. Um, but I, I guess strategically, you might say, you, what, what you have to do is you have to get in front of your customer, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and that's the idea. So how do you get in front of your customer? You either go knock on their door, which people don't like. Um, you you call them, people don't like that either. You text them, people don't like that. Um, you post on Facebook, but are they going to come like that content? Probably not. Um, I getting in front of your customer is the key. So how do you do that? An engagement pod doesn't really put you directly in speaking to your end user. It just kind of creates this fluff and this like, oh, shiny thing, what's going on over here? Um, So they've noticed it, but it's not the same as interacting directly with -hmm. with your target audience. Um, So I would say a group is a good way to build an audience um it's probably the best way to do it organically so uh and the other the other option is the paid ads on platforms Mm -hmm. so if you're not getting um you're not getting noticed um and let's just be honest the the platforms are set up because you know, for businesses, it's very hard for businesses to get. I could write a book on it, but I'm I'm not going to. <laughs> they're, they're I won't say they're hostile to businesses, but they're uh, they're pre- they 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 really want you to spend on Correct. the ads. So why would they why would they give you any organic help to lift you to the top to get the attention for free, mm-hmm. right? So uh, I'd say Facebook group like groups. Reddit, um, anywhere there's your target audience is coming together to discuss their trade, uh, their similar interest. Um, that's the best way to do it. I, I, I mean, that's how I did it is I found a bunch of Facebook, local Facebook community groups, and I just kept posting my advertisements in there, right? It was whatever the flavor of the week for the install was and and put it in here and let people interact with it. And 
pretty soon. I had over, a th- you know, I think it took a little over two years, two and a half years, and I had like a thousand likes on my page. But when I would put content out, people would actually interact with it and enjoyed it as opposed to I had a thousand generic likes and follows from just anybody. And it made all the difference in the world of trying to find new clientele and and land projects because people actually wanted to see the content I was putting out. I, I got lots of compliments along the way of, oh my gosh, we can tell how much care you put in just from the pictures you take and the way you describe your projects. Like we, we, we had to hire you f- to do ours, right? It didn't matter. We, we didn't even look at anybody else, but it was this slow build of working through it instead of just trying to get in front of everybody in the Valley that wanted an installation. It was, I want to get in front of the people that really want to, that really want Kyle. And, and that I think was the, one of the differences in marketing myself. And that's, that's how you ha- build a brand. And that's what we're after is stop. You're not selling, yeah. you're not selling an installation. Stop thinking that. The, that yeah. It's not, you're not just an installer and that's not what you're selling. You, you solve the problem of I have ugly thing in my house that doesn't function for my needs and you're solve you're, you're selling the solution to that. And so when you start realizing that you're selling a solution and you can get that in front of people that want that solution, they will love your content, but like, call me flooring insulate. Like it doesn't work. No, Mrs. Jones doesn't want to see that stuff. And so she's not going to interact with it. But if you, if you give her a story and she's like, holy crap, that's me too. Yeah. And she's like, oh, I want to be, I want to be a part of this. And then they start actually wanting to learn about you and, and follow you. I, in fact, I just had a call and had to turn down a project that I was referred to over a year ago and they just took forever to reach out. And I was like, I can't do it. And she was like, oh my God, I've been following you. I've been watching all the content you put out. And I've, I've researched you. She found I was doing the podcast and she's like, it's, it's amazing all the things you're doing. And I was like, she's like, I can't believe you're not going to do my floor. Like I'm so disappointed, you know, but it was, they were able to find something and had something to connect with instead of, uh, yeah, I, I install. Floor. You had the solution for them. You weren't, you weren't like, Hey, I'm Kyle. Um, I do this. This is me. This is what I do. This is, you know, um, when you're when you're speaking to your target audience, they don't really care how, you know, how successful you are or what cars you drive or, you know, they care about the solution that you have for them. They care about and I, they care about themselves. OK, mm-hmm. uh, they may have something uh, they need fixed. They want a, a new floor. They want a, a new shower. Um, if you go on and you tell them, hey, I'm I'm, uh, you know, I'm talented in playing a ukulele. I'm you know, here I am at the beach. You know, here I am. You're like they don't mm-hmm. care. They, this it That's all good and great to see that stuff. But they really care about how you can help them. Um, and so, in, and that's, that's engagement pods, right? So how are you, where are the people that you need to help? Are you attracting those kinds of people? Um, and if your engagement pod, say you're, you're a tile installer, mm-hmm. right? And in your engagement pod, you've got, you know, a professional bowler, you've got, a, um, an airline pilot or um, stay home mom or hairdresser. Um, how does that, how does that help? Unless you've already sold the service to those people and they're providing a testimonial for you. So if you go, if, if you were to take an engagement pod, you're like, okay, he's selling tile tile work Mm -hmm. and you and you went you connected you looked at the people engaging with his content or her content um and you you shoot a message to the hairdresser and you say hey um i noticed you and they're gonna ask you know for recommendation they're gonna ask your opinion of of what kind of a job they did for you right and the hairdresser says oh no i don't i've never hired him 
I've never had tile work done by that person. Mm-hmm. Well, that causes a little confusion. I was like, why are you in inter- then they want why are you interacting with them then? Are you friends? Are you, you know, uh, you could say, yeah, oh, he's my friend. Okay. Okay, cool. But the, the what I'm looking for is the solution. Um, I'm looking for the hairdresser to say, yes, I hired Kyle to do my floor and he did an excellent job. Yep. Great. Um, and I, that's kind of, so targeting is important, you know, and being surrounded by like-minded people are important, but those like-minded people have to have a shared interest too. It's got to be a shared um, hobby or or job or you know, um, because then if if you have in high engagement from fellow tradespeople um, versus you know, like a I don't know soccer moms i don't know <laughs> so you, then then you've established yourself as an authority in your trade and they can see all these other trades people interacting with your content and they're like wow even other tile setters are following this person you know um the, uh, man that that one's tough to me is it, uh, like i think there's two different ways to do content personally right i think that there is a you can either make content that professionals are going to enjoy or you can make the content that the homeowner is going to right. enjoy and so right. first you need to decide what kind of content you're going to make mm-hmm. then you can figure out the you based on that then you can get the audience because again i think yeah having other professionals interact with the stuff that i'm putting out for homeowners is good, especially if they're like, "Hey, man, that looks really good," you know. It, the it, com- it, yeah. Then, the then you're getting compliments, is- and they're they're building up that you are knowledgeable. Yeah. Um. And, and that I could see that as helpful. It, it could the also content, scare people the away. Particular, yeah. The particular piece of content where it would work is is it, within that piece of content. The messaging is speaking to the per, you know, the target that you're trying to sell the solution to. You're not, so if you're, hey, I'm at the beach today, guys, and they're like, hey, good job, live your life, you know? Um, That's that's great, but if you're selling a solution in that piece and the messaging of the piece of content is, I, you know, I can provide this service to you, it'll, um, it's, I'll get in and out of your house in, you know, in a Mm -hmm. fast time, um, and, um, I'm reputable in my industry. Um, I've, I'm educated, and then you have the follow the the, the trades people, you know, in engaging with that, essentially engaging with your ad. Yes, um, that helps. Um, I don't think there's a single answer to it because there are engagement pods that have worked, right? So, um, it, I don't think it's. It's not like cut and dry, like, and I'll say the tactics change too. So Mm -hmm. there's tactics, your strategy. Is this, is this tactic working? If it's not, you can, you can change tactics. Oh, the algorithm on the platform changed. I have to change my tactic. So, um, and it's really experimental too like with content is this piece of content you could think it's a great piece of content put it out there and it's it's a dud yes. right uh, a real stinker and you're like wow i spent all that time and energy in that and for what purpose again going toward like putting all the energy into um you know gaining followers and just churning out content you know 10 times a day um what you know if it's not working you're wasting your time so um and i have a i opened up now if i don't you're i don't know if you're familiar with hootsuite um they have a uh they've got a lot of good blogs on their on their site and i anyone that's you know in social media or using social media for promotion, I think you should read some of the blogs on their site. Um, they're very good. Um, and it asks the question in this one blog, um, should brands use Instagram engagement pods? 
Okay. Right. That's the question we're we're talking about today. And it's not just necessarily Instagram, um, but Instagram's, you know, a good a good subject to look at because they have there's in, it's the primary spot for engagement pods. OK. Um, and it, it says uh, Instagram engagement pods are very alluring to a way to increase engagement on Instagram, but there are many pitfalls and reasons to steer clear of them. Um, and it lists, I won't go into the long, you know, the paragraphs to support the, the statement, um, but there are five statements they've made. Um, and they say it's time consuming. It doesn't produce meaningful results. The results will look suspicious. I have to scroll down. You have to like and comment on content that's not relevant to your brand. Mm -hmm. And Instagram's algorithm is probably smart enough to figure out what you're doing. Hey, and they're going to penalize. Me. They're going to penalize you for it. Yeah. I want to. Because it's not authentic. I want to scroll my feed and I want to see the content that I want to see, and I'm going to interact with the stuff that stands out to me. Like then it it mm -hmm. works better. For everyone, if people aren't engaging with your content, go ask your audience what they want and and yeah. find out. And and that's, yeah. man, I'm an open door over here, right? Like I've heard and I maybe I do need to take your all's, you know, feedback and make the episode shorter. I just don't find that 30 minute episodes work. I don't think I get the content that's valuable to you without it being an hour long episode. So that's why I've never shortened them and I, and I have it longer. I also think that because it's, um, on demand content, you can pick it up and you know, anytime it's, yeah. it's right where you, yeah. it's, it's on your phone. It's oh. right where you left you, off. So I don't, you can listen, you can listen to half of it and then come back and listen to the other half. Correct. So I don't like, I've never understood the complaint that the episodes are too long. And so maybe I miss like, I give it to me in another way. If that's, if that's the legitimate complaint is that the episodes are too long and, and I'll work on it. If you want shorter content, I'm, I'm open to it. But I, I think that's the thing is that I, you know, we need feedback from actual sources as opposed to, like you said, right. I can go and it, the BNI group that I was in was very much like this. And it's because it was just formed and everyone was like, Oh, we got to give referrals and we got to refer everybody just because we know them. And I was like, no, yeah. I, I think this is the same thing. You see the post on light all the time where it's like, if I have a friend that owns a tax business, he's doing my taxes. And if I have a friend that owns a landscaping business, he's doing my landscaping. And I look at that and I just go, no, that's not at all. What's going to be done. If I have a friend that, that does taxes and he's really good at taxes yeah he'll do my taxes and if i right. have a friend that does landscaping and he's really good at landscaping and i need a landscaper i will have him yeah. do my landscaping i can have a friend and they can absolutely suck at their job yeah and i don't want them doing it because they suck just yeah. because you do something doesn't mean i want you to do it and that's kind of how yeah. bni is set up is it's like well you get in these groups and there can only be one of everybody and so that's the person you refer and i'm like now I'm going to refer people that I know that actually do that task very well. And if I know, like, and trust you, then I'll do it. I think that's what we're yeah. looking for. Within, well, you can like, have friends, you can have friends and, um, and you may not think they're, I mean, may not think they're particularly good at what they're doing. Right. So, mm -hmm. or you could have a, you could have friends you disagree with, um, you could have friends that you're you're just like oh, God. Stop calling me, right? So, um, so the friend thing is also a little suspicious to people too. You're like, oh, I have a friend that can do that. Yeah. Well, we all have friends that can do things, but you may not want your friend to do that for you, for one reason or another. Yeah. Um, and so I think it's and also oh, you have a friend to do it. Well, you're just supporting him. You're just trying to help him, right? And yeah. so that's a little, in. Oh, well, it's your friend. So, of course, you would refer him. You know, there, there's that kind of attitude that's out there, too. People are suspicious. Um, well, you know, well, is your friend good? Right? That's mm -hmm. the question. Are they good at it? Or, well, you know, I mean, you have to, there has to be more of a testimonial there than, hey, I have a friend that can do that for you. I, I agree. I'm going to interrupt this real quick, Shauna. 
All right, folks, we're going to see if I can nail it this week because I've been I've been fumbling this one and the boss is here. So I better get it. I better get it right. <laughs> we got a quick I word don't even from remember. I don't even remember which one it is. <laughs> She's like, I don't even know what I wrote. We got a quick word from John's, John's Manville. Compatible with all GoBoard products is the new GoBoard membrane. If you're asking why a membrane when GoBoard itself is waterproof through and through, a membrane extends your GoBoard installation for mud pans, steam rooms, and shared walls requiring a fire rating board underneath the waterproofing. Now who's going to be the most badass GoBoard installer out there? You are. Visit www.jm.com forward slash GoBoard for all the product details, including their generous uh, sealant options uh, that you don't have to use go board sealant although you know that is theirs and and they like it when you do but they got other options so you can figure out how to put your shower together in a pinch they've got a generous warranty on there and are compatible with a lot of other uh products on the market and don't forget about their shower pans go board wedges for being able to do really cool tilty things with shower pans and curbless things (laughs) and uh they got their drain too, right? We got a, we got we got drain options. Drain options. And uh, right? again, I'll, I'll throw it out there: if you need to build a bench, there is two inch go board available. You just have to go bug your supplier and be like, "Hey, man, you better bring in some really thick go board for me," and they can order it up and get it in there for you. There's not just half inch go board, so uh, you got lots of right. options. And yep. we appreciate their support around here. So go check them out. And uh, obviously, if you have any questions, reach out to Shauna and she'd be happy to help you. Absolutely. Uh, all right. Uh, cool. So, that was an edgy one. Yeah, I, I, used a, yeah. I used a very edgy word in that you, one you now sure, that I yes, remember. You, yes, yes, you <laughs> did. And maybe that's good for engagement. Right. Maybe. So sometimes yeah. we, we have to try things yeah. on the edge. And I, I think that's yeah. really what we're looking for. Right. Is, OK, I want to build a brand and I want to get engagement within it. So now how do I do that without watering it down? And I think a lot of the options that we come up with, which is why we're doing this episode, is that it is getting watered down. I don't mm-hmm. want just anybody. I want specific people. And then how do I get them to interact with it? over and over and over again and really enjoy it and so what are some steps or like what have you found that's worked for you that got people to interact with more content and obviously like in a in a b2b thing it's a little bit different than b2c but what do you feel helped kind of get go board off the ground and more people to start interacting with it sure um, it started with early adopters, people that that dis- tr- decided to try the product, mm-hmm. um, and um, and if they liked it, they talked about it on the internet. Um, and then when they're talking about it on the internet, I'm there to support the discussion uh, if they have questions. If, so, and also, um, how. How I'm able to engage, like how I get engagement, because, you know, I've been told you're the face of GoBoard, right? Mm -hmm. So, but I had to work at that. No one knew who I was until, you know, I showed up on the scene and started interacting. And I think like there's corporate speak, right? You can, and there's time where I go to work and they're like, Shauna, don't say that, you know? Um, and that's happened a couple times, you know, make sure you don't say anything embarrassing. Um, and I get that too, but, but also you have, you have to, you have to relate to your end user, your target audience. You have to, you have to be relatable. You have to be relatable. You have to be likable. Um, because if, if you're just, you sound like a robot, you know, you're just churning out you know, canned, the canned corporate responses that, that doesn't, they want, they want to interact with a human being too. They don't want to interact with bots or, you know, they get a, you know, uh, so you have, so I guess, you know, I'm a, I'm more relatable. Um, I like to laugh. I like to have a good time. I like to, 
you know, inject some humor into my life. And, and, and I also, I think like using the word badass, right? Well, like, I don't typically say that word every mm-hmm. day in my, I mean, I've started to, but, but that's because I've been hanging around with, you know, <laughs> these trades people, right? Um, mm-hmm. I was described as, as being able to speak to the contractor. You have to relate. And that contractor wants you to kind of reach them in a way that, you know, hey, oh, well, she's kind of like us. She's fun. She's cool. She's, you know, yes. she's not stuff. She's not a suit. Right. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And so I think that's where where I've been successful is because I have a little edge. Um, and and I I've I think I've gotten edgier hanging around with all you folks. Um, Could be. Uh, and I don't I you know, if you're likable and you and you're knowledgeable about what you're selling, um, in addition to being likable and friendly and, you know, not afraid to laugh at a, you know, a joke that might be a little dark for some people, um, that helps, right? You're, you're a human being and you can relate to other human beings more easily. Yes. Uh, I think what I want to take out of that is, is you're talking to, you know, interacting with the audience on, on their level. Right. And so if we need to stop advertising to ourselves. When you are promoting yourself online, think about who you're promoting yourself to. You're not promoting yourself to another contractor. I don't care about the ANSI standards. I don't, well, Mrs. Jones doesn't care about ANSI standards. She doesn't care about what the NWFA says or CTAF or, NTCA or what, whatever, right? It doesn't, none of that right. matters. Right. She cares about her pretty house probably, right? Like you have to remember that you're targeting a female. And I think we're really bad about that in this industry because it's so male dominated that we try and advertise to ourselves as males and that doesn't work. Like that's not who's buying. Remember who's buying and create content geared towards them. So maybe a little bit of a softer approach in how you communicate your message. Maybe some prettier stuff with some designs yeah. and color. Um, yeah. The the language needs to be toned down a notch or two. Like the, let's think yeah. about what we're actually creating as the content and then getting the people to engage with it. The other thing you said was that, you know, you were relying on the, early adopters to really interact with the content and be the ones to help spread the message. And I think that's something that would be really helpful for everyone is you need your band of followers and clients from online to like, they need to come and support you. If they really, really believe in your business and they really loved what you did, then ask them, right? It's not just about asking for the review. It's about finding the people that are going to promote you and and have experienced what you offer. And you need them out there on Instagram and Facebook saying, this company is is the one. They need to be the ones liking it and, and posting on it because that way their friends that are you know, in their network, when they start commenting on their stuff, they will see that they're interacting with you. And then that girlfriend of theirs may need a shower or the algorithm in general is just going to start saying this person with these things, right? Cause it's tracking how we spend our money, all the ads we interact with, all the words we use, it's tracking all that stuff. So if it sees somebody that's similar to her in the same area, it is more than likely going to put that content in front of that person who's a very similar target and that's what you want. But this whole get as many people as possible to like my content, that's not doing anything for you. Please stop. Just, just yeah. stop. I beg you. It's it, you're yeah. hurting yourself. <clears throat> yeah. If you have, you know, you made a, that was a very, very good point you made about uh, promoting yourself instead of, you know, finding out what makes the woman of the house tick mm-hmm. and what would what would help, let's say, persuade her to hire you to do the job in her house. Um, I mean, bring her a Starbucks. 
uh, you know, something just simple like that. Compliment her on, oh, is that a like that shirt really brings out the color of your eyes mm -hmm. um or you know not oh i need to be you know like you come in you're gruff and you're you know you're you're not relatable so you know what i mean and you also haven't shown yourself to be to care about what you know what her problem is and what solution you can provide to her you have to care you have to show that you care um and and that that's i mean when how to win friends and influence people that's a great book to read right yes, it is i mean you, if you're going around talking about yourself all day um people get get fatigued with that right oh my god he's talking about himself again right and they yep. get fatigued and they're like well he shows no interest in me or she shows no interest in me it's all about them um why would i why would i waste my time right if if i'm a homeowner and the and i and uh a contractor comes in the house and say i'm at the house whatever and i you know i like to talk with people too and, I, and if i go and like talking with this person kind of and i just hear all their i did this and that happened to me and da 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 and then and you're kind of like okay very self-focused person um, I'd like them to focus on me because yes. I'm hiring them to do the job. It's really about me. It's not about them. So, um, you got to remember that, um, people like, they like to have their ego stroked. I mean, here's a situation that happened to me in Las Vegas, um, my husband and I were walking through um, the, was it the Caesar's Palace uh, form shops? And I'm walking along and you pass by those kiosks in the middle and they want, hey, you want to try this lotion? You want it? You know, and you're like, no, thanks. No, thanks. No, thanks. Mm -hmm. um, and then I, I noticed um, I walked past a gal who was standing out in front of her shop. It was like skincare or something. And she said, oh, I really like that shirt you're wearing. And I was like, oh, really? You know, and like, here I am, I'm, I'm just getting through the mall. And she's like, oh, I really like your shirt. And I'm like, gotcha. tell me more, <laughs> tell me more, right? And and I'm I'm a pretty hard sell. Like, I'm like, nope, nope, because I know, I know the game, right? Mm -hmm. I'm like, nope, nope. Um, but I, I stopped and I gave her my time. Right. And she says, wow, your skin looks great. What do you use? And I'm like, I just use Cetaphil and lotion, you know, it just the stuff you can buy at the drugstore. Um, and she's like, oh, she goes, well, would you like to come in and try, you know? And I'm like, oh, there it is. That's the catch. <laughs> and I'm like, no, thank you. Okay. But she almost had me, Kyle. She yeah. almost had me in that store because she complimented my shirt. Mm -hmm. and it and i was and it it took it took the attention my attention was turned to that so um that's that's kind of a i mean it's it's almost like a magic trick it is um, well we love uh, again i mean you were saying we don't want to listen to people talk about themselves but we right. all want to talk about ourselves i think yeah. you know you mentioned you know dale carnegie and how to win friends and influence people and i think that the story that comes to mind is the one he tells. And he was like, I, I was at a party and he was like a younger kid. Right. And this, he talked to this dude all night about trains because he was really into trains. And then he was telling his parents the next day about it or something. And they were like, the, he, Dale was like, you know, Oh, this dude, he was like, he just loved trains as much as I do. Like, he, you know, turns out the dude never once like said anything about trains. He just kept asking questions about trains and he paid attention and he let the, the author yeah. speak about him all he wanted. Yeah. And he yeah. thought, you know, even though the guy wasn't being a conversationalist, he thought he thought he was a great conversationalist. And all he did was ask questions that inquired yeah. about them. And I yeah. think that's, you know, it's it's the same thing. Like, what content yeah. do you need to put out in order to get the audience to connect with it. And so we're really good at making content for us because we want to make it about things 
we care about. Yeah. I don't care what you care about. I care about you what cut, your yeah. ideal clientele care about. Yeah. And that's yeah. what I want to see you produce. Go produce that stuff. And if you don't know, yeah. ask them. And and you yeah. should know because you should be asking these questions. You should know out of the last 10 projects you did, at least half of them, I hope you know the reason why you were in the house. And it's not because they needed a new shower or a floor. There is a bigger underlying issue that you solved and you need to know what that is. And and then yeah. now you're engaging yeah. with your audience, but you can create things that other parts of your audience can engage with. And that's the whole purpose of why we're here is how do we get people yeah. to engage with yeah. us as opposed to what are you going to do? You're going to go buy your likes. It ain't going to work. I promise you. It's not show me a business no. that has bought followers and is successful. <laughs> Please, I please someone show me. I, I would love to see the content. It's a challenge. Go put it in the Floor Academy yeah. Facebook group. I challenge yeah. you to show me a business that's bought likes and is still successful long term. You you when you so let's say for example you have a thousand followers, okay, mm-hmm. and and you're getting engagement. Your engagement rate is like let's say eight percent, ten percent engagement rate for a thousand followers so let's say that's a you know a hundred people that that could buy something from you okay but but that's not enough to sustain your business and so you go what do i do i need more followers how do you get more followers quick enough where you know your bill's going to get paid next week it that it takes time to build Mm -hmm. uh build steam i'll just say to build steam and so then you go and you buy another thousand followers, but there's still only a hundred people engaging. So now what's your engagement rate, right? And your engagement yeah. rate is what the platform is looking at. Oh, well, this person gets 10% engagement. We're going to boost them. They artificially will boost you. Um, and so when you're, when you add those followers that are doing nothing for you, um, you've you've kind of you've adjusted your math there right and it's Mm -hmm. and you've not adjusted it in a good way you would think that having two thousand followers would look better to people but the point is to get the boost on the platform so you're you're more visible you're when when you're floating at the top you get seen more and that's what you want and by adding you know, bots to your, like, that's not, that's not really authentic enough where your engagement rate is going to stay high so that you get the, the algorithm helps you. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, it's, it's math, right? Because they're tracking the math. Um, they're not, they, they're not going through each comment and looking, oh, well, they're not like verifying each comment. As you know, and that's why negative comments, um, negative comments can also uh, cause an engagement. Like your engagement goes up, yeah, and and then you're floating to the top. They can't. The platform isn't determining whether you're getting compliments or insults. Okay, uh, I mean, I think that's, that I think there is some of that, but again, like even bad press is is still good press like i if people are leaving the mad emoji on my post it they're still interacting with it and it's still going to put it in front of more people because they're saying oh like this is getting a rise out of people right it's the same thing as why the news is only bad news we don't see good stories on the news you don't see wholesome wins about how somebody's life got saved and and like that's not it's 99 percent horrible death and murder and and rapists and then one quick 20 second bite at the end of of you know how somebody's life was saved because bad stuff sells so if i can get bad engagement on my content and people are leaving like the angry emoji i'm probably still winning and and i'm good with that you're floating if it's floating you to the top of the feed um it's it's working as it's as it's um this the way the system is set up yeah. it's working as a, as a system and it's working properly they, they want to um, see i think i would disagree with you somewhat about the negative the negative attention is also good 
I they say I, that, right? They say even negative press is good press. I don't I just don't I don't subscribe to that. I just don't. And I I like I'm like, "Oh, you know, oh, I got a I had a troll on our page today and but but we got, you know, 10 new likes out of it. Um, but that that negativity is still on your page, right? For people to come look at. It's like bad reviews in a way. I don't you, think it's... Yeah, but, I, ah, man. I, so I'm going to argue bad reviews, right? So like bad reviews, it, some of them may be legit. A lot of times it's a communication problem and the person leaving the review shows how much of an ass they are. Sure. <laughs> so, sure. You know, yeah. like, again, like, I think yeah. you can use you can use a bad review and still come out looking good. It just depends on how you respond sure. to it. You can be how the you respond to it. Right. You sure. have to you have yeah. to take the high road and you need to respond professionally. So I, I, mm-hmm. I'm going to I'll, I'll, oh, I'll, I'll, I'll die Kyle. on this grave, Shauna. I will say <laughs> that, like, I, I will turn around and, and make it good. I, you can you can make yourself be so negative and bad that it's, it's not good. And I'm not saying that, you know, sure. If yeah. People are well, absolutely trashing comments. you. That's bad. But if people are like yeah. arguing a, a point or they're just putting an angry emoji, like, I don't know what upsets yeah. people, but it's still yeah. an interaction. Like it draws more attention to it. And True. you know, I, well, John, my buddy, John Steyer here, it just made the comment that, you know, the other day, this will be a couple weeks back by the time this episode comes out proper. But Paul Wilkie put a post up about how he fired a guy before he even hired him. And so he's, yep. he's in the mastermind groups and he went and um, interviewed a guy over the phone and, and wanted to meet him in person and interview him more. And he would pretty much decided, well, I'm going to hire this guy as long as he can show up and, and do what he says he needs to do. Well, he showed up to the wrong location, which then meant he was going to be half an hour late to the interview. And he was like, no, nah, I'm good, man. You're, you're fired. Like, I'm, and he was like, wait, yeah. what? And so I think some of it was like poor communication on, on Paul's part, and he could have described the situation a little bit better. But he stuck to the values of his company and hired it. And there was people that were coming out on both sides. They were like, this is great. Yeah. We need more of this. And there were yeah. people like, I can't believe you didn't give him a chance. It's hard to find installers. And like yeah. some some of the point was missed because of the bad communication in, in the post. But overall, like the thing went crazy. And there was positive and negatives on, on both True. sides and so yeah. you gotta it was an authentic conversation uh, uh, that's and people what people were able yeah. to share their share their opinion on it um and also when you see that you share an opinion with people um it validates your opinion a little bit too so oh. it gives you more it just gives you like and then it's you know like the people who thought oh. he was wrong or we're are, not gonna let's are, not go there we're gonna that's yeah. a that's a different discussion <laughs> That's a different but, kind you know, of really toxic engagement pod. <laughs> but 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 what it what I because I saw that right and I mm-hmm. did I engage with it and I I I don't think I've engaged much on your content recently but I saw that and how I felt about it, you know I expressed how I felt about it again and I also just disagreed with you about negative press being good mm-hmm. press too. Um, so I I think and and I've had a recent you know where whoops. You probably shouldn't have said that, right? So, um, so it, I don't know. It, the negative, the negative things make me uncomfortable. Like I, I don't, I don't want people to think negatively of me. So I'm very careful. Of, I'm usually very careful about how I say things. Okay. Um, yeah. But once in a while, you know, and we talked before the episode. Once in a while, like you have things going on in your life too, where. Uh, you know, you just, one day you just snap, right? You just can't take it anymore. That's it. Not, not the nice person today. Yes. You know, I can't, I can't be nice every day. And that's, you know, so, but there was a lot of attention put on Paul's post because, um, it's, it was, it was two different and there's no right or wrong. I don't, it's not right or wrong. Right. Uh, but you did see you know, a good portion of people are like, well, I wouldn't want to work for you. And, yes. and then yeah. people are like, yes, that's, that's how you, you need, because that's what you need to be successful is you have to be punctual. You have to be consistent. Uh, you have to show up and you can't, and making a mistake, especially in the workplace, making a mistake 
is sometimes very hard to over, you can't overcome that very easily, right? Mm -hmm. Someone isn't just going to forgive you for multiple mistakes. You're, you're going to, you know, you're going to get a talking to, you're going to get a warning. You're going to be told, don't embarrass the company that you're going to be, you know what I mean? Yes. So, um, I don't think it was right. There was no right or right. It was just, that was his way of handling the situation because of his values. And mm -hmm. I'm sure that installer probably thought, what the heck? <laughs> like that probably caught him Could by be. surprise yes. too. Right. And so he's probably thinking about it. Right. Could be. And I, I, I mean, I, I hope, I hope that's the case, right? I hope that the yeah. installer learned something. I hope, you know, I know Paul's yeah. learned something from it. I think that, and there's, there's, uh, look, there's a million different ways to skin a cat. There's a million different ways to run a business. And so everyone's going to mm -hmm. find the way that works for them. And if mm -hmm. that kind of employee works for you and you want to give them a chance, give them a chance. And I, and yeah. I hope it works out for you. Right. But other yeah. people are going to say, yeah. I, look, they didn't fit what I needed. Yeah. So I'm just going to move on and find the person that fits. And right. and that's, it's okay that we disagree. Right. But it was right. interesting to see that even with negative engagement it it still led it led to a positive place and so don't think that i guess the point is, is that just because there's negative stuff happening on a post doesn't mean it's not a good post that might be what makes it a good post that's a fair that's a fair point that's a fair point kyle you may have almost convinced me oh just all right. yeah you may have almost convinced me that Maybe a little bit of negative press isn't so bad. Should have you know. should have joined the high school debate team. Maybe maybe I yeah, missed my calling in life. <laughs> and it's yeah yeah exactly. <laughs> and it's it's a if you get a negative comment, it's an opportunity for you to turn it around too. So, oh, exactly. And when you're when you're in marketing, when you're in sales, you look at everything as an opportunity. Um, good, bad, you know. Like if that's a neg like negative comments, I'm just like, oh my god, why? Uh, cause it's a lot of work to overcome it. Right. Mm -hmm. So I think that's, maybe that's me. I don't like the, I don't like to have to do the hard work to overcome it because it's time consuming. It really it stretches your brain. It, it, you gotta be patient with people. You can't say the wrong thing, you know? So, uh, you have, you have a fair point. Is maybe well, this maybe... is why Shauna works for GoBoard and isn't running her own company. Cause she doesn't want to do the hard work. <laughs> I don't want to do We're... the hard work of changing a negative person into a positive person. Okay. It's a you, lot of work. You work very hard. I'm just teasing you. It was it was it was perfect though. Um, no, and you're you're correct. Look, it is hard, and I, I I don't want to do the work. But that's when we set up our businesses. That's what we're saying we're going to do is that we're going to go above and beyond and and do all the things that other people yeah. aren't willing to do. And I think that's. A great point. Yeah. So what I'm going to say is, is there anything we didn't hit on that we should hit on very quickly? <clears throat> Gosh, you know, Kyle, I can't. I think just the focus of the conversation, I think we covered it. Okay. Um, was there anything else? I can't think of it. I think it's, I think we're good. I okay. think we covered it. Well, then. Yeah. All right, folks. Don't yeah. just have anybody interact with your stuff. Go have the people yeah. you want interacting with it, interacting with it yeah. because they truly enjoy it. And oh, uh, Kyle, there yes. was one more point. Okay. I'm sorry. This is going to be a little bit longer of an episode. Oh, well. <laughs> it could, it's, it's possible. Folks. It could be. It's fine. It is a, Let's do remember it. Remember we, we talked about um, what you're t in addition to the math, we talked about, you know, your engagement rates, mm -hmm. right? We talked about your geographical location. Yes. And being, uh, so if you're marketing to people as a, as an installer, as a, a contractor, you have to physically show up at the job, right? So you have, you have a territory to work from. Yes. Um, you may not, you can't drive a thousand miles across the country because you marketed to, uh, let's say Phyllis in Florida and you live in Arizona, like what's, unless you have a crew that can get out there and you, and you mm. have the operation to perform work on a bigger footprint, you should be focused on your area, your geographical location, because all the promotion outside of that could get costly, time consuming, and it's a waste. Like just focus on 
what was that? What did you say? Be famous in your 50 mile radius oh, or something? I, uh, okay. So it is, who do I listen to? He's got a podcast. It's, it's called, uh, more cheese, less whiskers. And he also does. I love marketing. It's not Joe Polly. It's Dean Jackson. Gene Zach, G- Dean, Dean Jackson is like this old school direct marketing guru guy. And he's come up and he calls it, um, he wants to be 15 mile famous. And so that's like, he's, he talks about his, his girlfriend does a, uh, they got like a eyebrow place. And so they've, they've built it up and like every, like he just wants everybody in 15 miles to know like that's where you need to go get your eyebrows done. And I think they have some other services too and whatnot, but that's the goal, right? Is like, what's your service area? And for me, it was, I would service anything that I could drive to within an hour, which depending on direction was anywhere from like 35 to 70 miles. Literally, yeah. it just, it was crazy. Um, yeah. So I, you know, I, I focused on anything within pretty much 50 miles. Like I was marketing to, like I went and found all the Facebook groups and I, I set up all of my stuff on Google and on, yeah. you know, whatever other platforms I was listing myself on. Like those were the city names I was using that was where I was setting up a map if you were able to target it that way. Because yeah, yeah, I didn't I didn't need a phone call from my uncle's friend that liked my page in Wisconsin saying, Hey, come install my floor. Well, okay, but it's now it's gonna cost it, it, you. it was already gonna yeah. cost you, but now I need an extra like eight thousand dollars on top of it to travel up there and, and do that. Like I'm happy to do it if you're mm-hmm. willing to pay. So yeah. I, you know, if you have if you have the clientele that'll that'll take it sure market to them but otherwise yeah. again having everybody and their mother randomly like your page because they're friends with yeah. somebody that likes your page horrible yeah. idea because you're now you're yeah. getting way outside your target area yeah yeah so it's it's a waste to spend that energy and time you know putting a co- putting content together f- just to to get attention from the whole country yeah you know um well, i had another thought too okay. um now, social media is a very um, easy, easy to easy. What's the word? It's very accessible to everybody. Mm-hmm. Right. And social media has had this huge like, oh, social media is a way to do marketing for your business and social media, social media, social media, social media. But did you go find the local HOA and put an ad in their brochures that they send out every month? If you have a good HOA, I yeah. mean, a good HOA is debatable, but you know they do they do provide um you know a newsletter if if Mm -hmm. they're a good hoa that's doing some things and you can find a babysitter in there you can find someone to walk your dogs for you in there you can find a contractor in there um so also there's some traditional like print that would be a traditional print ad right that i think people are like oh print is dead i'm like but is it though because i look through my hoa newsletter and i'm like Oh, well, you know, well, if, if I needed someone to come watch the cats, I could find someone in my neighborhood to come watch the cats. Yeah. I, I think we're nosy, right? Like that's on such a yeah. local level that it's more interesting. Is print dead yeah. for traditional media? Yes. In fact, uh, yeah. Twitter is the, we won't, I don't need to go down this road. Twitter's the best news service there is. Twitter gets info out before the Wall Street Journal does these days. And so yeah. the, the traditional print media newspapers are, are dead, but on that local of a level, I think it, it works, but you know, and a a lot of people struggle like, Oh, I I can't get into this neighborhood. I, I, I don't have anybody I've ever done a project for. Okay. But is it that exclusive of a neighborhood that maybe they have their own community magazine or that there is an HOA that you can work with? Like there's ways to get into places. And and so, yeah, you can find a way to hit ideal clientele and you just got to get creative. And I think a good, a good marketing mix too. So yes, absolutely use social media. Mm-hmm. And also abs- absolutely use, you know, social media that might not come top of mind because there are other platforms. You know, yes. we, we always think about Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, Twitter, maybe Pinterest, you know, but there's next door, yep. which is basically in your neighborhood. Yes. And all you have, you're scrolling on Facebook or I mean, at least I am, I'm scrolling all night on Facebook. No, if I was a contractor, I would probably spend more time scrolling 
like I do on fate I call it doom scrolling doom scrolling on next door nobody you know you and I I think you could provide the same um you could become the authority in your area just by if you see a homeowner's like hey I've got this you know this my yep. tile is cracked what do I do yep right and there you are yep. boom you're right there and that person might live in your neighborhood so yeah. There's other way. There's, I think, focusing focusing on Facebook and Instagram is, and and that's all the marketing that you're doing is probably not a great idea. Like, diversify your cha- you know, your your marketing mix. It's, yes, I definitely pick a couple of platforms you want to go with, and, and those are generally where people are going to start. And once you get comfortable posting there on a regular yeah. basis, then then expand it. But yeah. there's there's definitely more options out there and you know a lot of people aren't using it. old people They're are still... on facebook now old people right we got to remember that it's been around since early 2000s for the most part at this point uh, well mid 2000s well, 2006 so it's been is when i joined yeah so i mean we're almost 20 years into this thing and so that was yeah. and it was made for college students at the time right mm-hmm. it was designed for them so we're almost 20 years into it which puts them as like yes it's our target demographic but as we continue to move forward where are the where's the new target demographic hanging out because it's not going to be on facebook yeah. they're all on TikTok right now right the future yeah. and so that's another place to look like is that still going to be yeah. the thing and how do you grow an audience there and, and get work out of that because TikTok is such a national and global thing that how do you really hone it down to be i how want my target, local be more targeted market. yes um, yeah and maybe that's not the thing to do that on right maybe that's not the best platform yeah. and so i think right. it's you got to go do your research folks just like you got to do the research to identify your target demographic you got to do the research mm-hmm. of ask them where they hang out ask them what publications they are reading ask them where they participate online like these are questions that you should be asking and, and finding out about your clients while you're working in their home because if you're not playing psychologist and trying to understand who they are I don't know how you're going to find the next one because it's not dumb luck. That's, that's definitely, that's not going to work. All right. I think that does it. Does that do it now? I think that does it now. Yeah. (laughs) Okay. Awesome. I appreciate you coming on, Shauna. Always fun conversing with you. Yeah. Uh, what do we got here? Find us. Uh, I mean, if you're listening online right now, you you know where to find us, but we are available on almost every platform. We're trying to grow YouTube. I think we got uh, it's like 266 subscribers right now looking to hit a thousand. Help me out. Head over to the YouTube while you're logged into your your you know Gmail account and click subscribe. You can follow us over there. That way you can see all the funny faces I make while I do this and how I think. And I just, I look real goofy and it's probably semi entertaining. And and that way it's, it's more than just the words coming into your ear holes. You know, you got an image to look at. Uh, don't forget to visit Fuller Academy Pod to learn about all the other stuff we offer. You can visit Patreon and help support us over there. Go to the store. Like the go buy a shirt, right? If you want to support Floor Academy, you know, this is like the deal now. So I need your support now more than ever in the past few years. Pick up a shirt, hoodie. Um, if there's some kind of item that you want a Floor Academy logo on and it's not in the store, just ask me and I'll I'll see what that drop shipping company's got. They got all kinds of fun stuff. I think I can I've put it on bathing suits. There's a couple of Floor Academy bathing suits out there. There's some Floor Academy bikinis. Uh, that's, that's something that some women have bought. Uh, there's like sandals and magnets and cups and backpacks. And like, I don't, I've got all kinds of options we can put it on. You, you pick something. I'll let you know if it exists, if you really want it. Um, I think that does it for us. We got, uh, we got a quick word from Tice. So, uh, I was just at Tice. I got sick. I, uh, the content that's come out from that, the additional content, I apologize for my voice. It was rough, but it was fun, and it was packed with products and amazing exhibits. So whether you were at the event or missed it, the Tice team has released a lookbook covering a highlight of over 100 products that were featured at the show. You can access it now online at intlsurfaceevent.com slash lookbook. 
or click the link in the show notes. That's L O O K B O O K. It's a look book. And, uh, you got to make it out to the show next year. You, the, the networking opportunities, seeing the products that are coming to, to market. And while that means a little bit less to me these days than it has in years past, it's still an important part of the industry to understand where we're headed. Um, you know, why wouldn't you as an installer want to know what's coming, coming your way sooner rather than later? I don't want to just be handed products. I want to, I want to know about them in advance. So head on out to the show every, every January. Maybe it's, maybe it's really late January, early February. I don't know what we got going on for next year, but, uh, plan ahead, plan for it now, book out those weeks, lock them in and come and enjoy it. Come see me. There will probably be some talks and, uh, you know, we can talk about your business and find out how we can help you become more profitable have more free time, enjoy your family and just personal life a little bit more, and hopefully be more organized and systematized. All right. Thanks again, Shauna. That's going to do it for us, and we will catch you next week.